you will see. And I usually get a second notice here that we're live, and that's when we're actually live. So bear with us here. We'll try to figure out, make sure that everything is copacetic. And there you're seeing the Grand Seiko GMT stunner on the screen. And it is keeping perfect time. Okay, and looks like the audio is good. And so we are live, and hopefully the notifications will go out. Notifications are catch as catch can. And we are starting early. We're about eight minutes early. And this is going to be a special broadcast today. I wasn't planning on doing a broadcast, but I touched base with Steve, and he wasn't sure if he was going to be able to do one. So we shall see what we shall see um, and by the way I do want to give another shout out to Wild West Brushworks Wild West Brushworks I got the shaving brush from them and I just used it again and it is fantastic it's not shedding like the previous brush that I had so that was my goal to get one that didn't shed and and I think I was successful I was referred to them by the forums and um, two thumbs up bought it with my own money and but I want to give a shout out to those folks for making some great brushes and Jacko is in the in the house I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right from the Netherlands hello hello mister ENT T18 is in the house he says hello and so we're going to talk about watches that you can actually get. There's still a bunch of talk in the forums about the Rolex Pepsis, the Batmans, all these watches that are unobtainable unless you pay a ridiculous premium, and I don't believe in doing that. Or if you get lucky and wander into an AD at just the right time and there happens to be one sitting there. Again, you'd have to be really lucky for that to happen. Or if you spend way too much money at that AD in the first place, buying other items and so forth so that you get the Pepsi when it comes in because you're a, a really good customer. So if, if none of those things apply to you, let's talk about watches that you can actually buy that are relatively affordable and that do a great job. So David Williams says, hi, Craig, all wearing, wearing my new uh, GS9F. SBGN 005, love it. David, wow. Well, let me know if you can Skype in and show it to us. There's the uh, stunner that he's talking about. <coughs> now, in this picture here, it looks black. The dial looks black, but I've shown you all the photo before of it in the sun where you see that blue coming out. And so it really depends on how the lighting is hitting that watch as to whether or not the dial looks black or looks dark blue or even even a more of a blue blue depending on how the, the light is hitting it it's a pretty pretty amazing dial so there's that um, let's see wind turbine repair team and watch collectors in the house from New Hampshire there you go and uh, he's got the GS SBGN 003 uh, not today, next week though. Okay, so maybe David can call into the show next time. And so, <clears throat> and I don't know if you all caught uh, the Bark and Jack uh, live stream, but uh, he did a live stream and it was nice. He was interacting with a lot of the comments and so forth. And somebody asked him a question. He said, uh, they said, uh, do you think do you think Craig Ship is a watch expert? And he didn't really like answer the question. He kind of said, "Well, I haven't watched that many of his shows or whatever." But he kind of said, like, sort of like, "There's nobody really that's a watch expert because there's so much that you would have to know." But I think Tim from the Watch Box, I think we could call him an expert. But yeah, I've never, just for the record, I've never claimed to be an expert on watches. I'm just a user of high-end watches, and I've been using used Rolexes. I wore Rolexes for 40 years. There's an old uh, vintage photo from the mid-80s. Let me think when that would that would have been, uh, yeah, about the mid-80s. And so I was wearing, there I was wearing a um, GMT Master with the Oyster Bracelet. I had one before that with the uh, Jubilee that was all black. This one was red and blue with the uh, Oyster Bracelet in that picture. So, so I come from a standpoint of a watch user, 
and I talk about the watches that I actually wear and use and actually experience. I'll sometimes sometimes talk about a watch that I examine separately or something, but uh, generally speaking for me, the gear that I talk about, the watches I talk about are things that I actually have experience with. And I do dig down the rabbit hole. I do do a lot of research before I purchase a watch. I was researching this watch literally for years before I purchased it. So I do take a deep dive as far as a particular watch that I'm thinking about buying or acquiring, spending my hard-earned money on. Uh, but I don't claim to have a broad knowledge of watches because I'm only focused on what I'm going to buy and wear. And so that's how I uh, approach this whole thing. And this whole channel has always been about sharing information about different things that I buy and use, camera gear, audio equipment, even the setup that I'm using here to broadcast. I, I share a lot of this sort of thing because a lot of people over the years have helped me, have shared information with me and helped me along the way. So I'm just, you know, passing that on, playing that forward, if you will. Uh, members only jacking in that pick. No, it's not. It's a, um, <clears throat> that was a bomber jacket. I uh, believe that one was horse hide. It was a heavy, heavy leather bomber jacket, uh, very heavy uh, brass a zipper made in the United States of America back in the day I think it was about three hundred and fifty dollars back then so that a similar coat would probably be you know six seven hundred dollars maybe a thousand dollars today I don't have that coat anymore I think I gave it to a friend of mine when I got the um, the wested coat because he really liked it and it had a removable uh, mouton collar uh, which is basically sheepskin I think it was all the the cuffs around the wrist were all wool and around the wrist was all wool it was a high quality uh, coat and those shoes I have on there those were browning uh, feather lights those are made of kangaroo and uh, of course I had a knife there with me on on the hip and of course Ray-Ban uh, sunglasses and the beautiful Jennifer the beautiful Jennifer very classy young lady and as you notice that the cold weather didn't bother her much she just had that that top on and wasn't bothering to wear a coat it it made her she had to stay closer to me that way you know to try to stay warm so that's how that works don't let the ladies have a coat so um, yeah I don't I don't remember the brand of that coat I want to say that I got it I, it might have been a Willis and Geiger, but I, I don't. They may have been out of business by then. I, I don't know, but it was it was definitely made in the United States of America, and it was a pretty high end uh, coat. Um, and yeah, those those shoes. I don't know who made those boots for for Browning. I don't know if they were made by Russell, uh, but they were made in the USA also. And I still have those, and I've actually had them resold twice. Uh, they're they're really comfortable, very lightweight because they're they're made of kangaroo. So uh, if you guys mention in the chat you want to see them, I'll go get them and I'll show them to you. I'll show you what's left of them after 25 or 30 years. Uh, yeah, they they're still going. They still look pretty good for their age. So um, let me think. What else? Oh, Craig. Uh, Watch, back, watch expert, I don't know, but one thing I know is he's honest. Well, there you go. Well, here's the thing. I mean, and that's the other thing. The other reason why we kind of do this channel is there's a lot of misinformation out there, and there's a lot of what I call questionable advice, especially when it comes to investing in watches and, and buying watches to hold them in effect as investments. I think a lot of people are being misled, and I think it's unfortunate because I think these watches should be worn and used. I really do. I, I don't think they should sit in a box somewhere in a safety deposit box at a bank or whatever. I think you should buy watches if you have a one watch, two watch, three watch rotation. I think it's, the key word there is rotation. I think you should be wearing those watches and, and using them. And so, yeah, we try to 
we try to talk about that. R.M. Williams, possibly, if they're kangaroo. Well, let me go grab them, and maybe you can let me know. I'll, I'll go grab them. So stand by. <coughs> to go out to the utility room to get them but here they are and there's the latest sole that my cobbler here in uh, Frederick County put on them did a pretty good job they got some scuffs here and there but but they're still super comfortable and getting along see what they say in here they say browning uh, uh, genuine kangaroo upper. See the little kangaroo there. Um, so yeah, they've uh, they've uh, gotten the job done. Don't use them that often anymore, because when I'm hiking, I usually wear my Limer hiking boots, and then I've got the Russell boots. And but I do wear these occasionally. I wore them some years back when I was driving the bulldozer and clearing out the back acre at the Durwood Estate a place down there in Montgomery County. I was wearing these when I was driving the bulldozer. There you go. Got a video on the channel of that. That, that was pretty wild. <laughs> Some people chimed in. My gosh, you were abusing that bulldozer, you know. Well, I said, well, you know, I got the job done. <laughs> I did blow a um, hydraulic line on it and they had to come and replace the line. It was a rental of course, you know, they came and replaced the line and then I had at it some more. I was pushing some huge boulders with that puppy. It, there's a video on the channel here. Just search bulldozer. Um, did a good job there though. We, we, we reclaimed that rear back acre and put some real nice walking paths in and so forth and I've got some videos on the channel from the Durwood Estate and I've done some live streams from there. I'll be going back down here, down there fairly soon. Okay, let's see. Best switching by. I tell you, I really like the Russell Moccasins. Uh, Russell Moccasin Company in Berlin, Wisconsin. Do a, do a search on that, Matt. They really make some great stuff. I've shown them on the channel here, too. And I've got some videos on them. They're pretty awesome. Are those steel-toed? No, they aren't. No, the Brownings are not steel-toed. I don't have any steel toe boots right now, but my Limer boots, the toes are pretty hard. I mean, but they're not steel, steel toe, but those boots are probably bulletproof. I mean, they, they are some, some strong, strong leather. But anyway, we, we digress. Let's see, let's see here. We really should talk about the subject matter. They're pretty awesome, are those? Uh, so what we talked about, what the topic here was supposed to be watches that are actually available okay that you can actually buy without paying a premium and the watches I think I put on the thumbnail I think this was one of them of course that the GMT that's a heck of a buy for around three thousand dollars that's a heck of a watch and that you can actually buy now there there are starting I'm hearing that there are starting to be some waiting lists but they're not anything like Rolex I mean you know you might wait a month or something uh, but they're pretty much available. And um, if anyone has a lot of trouble getting one, let me know, and, and uh, we'll get you one. I, I can get you. I would ship you this one right here, and then I'd get another one for myself. But uh, we'd take care of you if, if you really have trouble getting one. But I, I think you can get one. So, th so that's a watch you can get. The other watch that's on the thumbnail, of course, is the Rolex Date 8. We've talked about them many, many times. And... I'm a firm believer in the Date 8. 
you know I wore them for a long time and let's see if we can pull up another photo here showing that I don't think you're going to be able to see in this photo but I'm going to pull it up I'm going to max screen it okay so you can't really tell in this photo but I'm wearing the day date with the conventional clasp in that photo and um, again same Ray-Ban uh, sunglasses so and of course that was my uh, Michael Douglas type phone that was a 8000 X Motorola that's the first one that they came out with commercially available I think that was about 1983 when they came out with that I had the test unit when they were doing the test from about 19 about June of 1980 to about 82 I had one of the prototype phones when they were doing the test in the DC metropolitan area here one of 150 phones and that's what I used during that test looked the same it, it just the phone the battery did not slide off the back on the prototype the test phones but it was basically the same phone but yeah that's a day date on wrist there so let's see if we can find a better shot of that day date and uh, oh this is a um, this is interesting because this is the SBDC 007 in this picture let me see if I can full screen this so I wore that for a couple of years and those are my Limer hunt hiking boots we talked about the Limer boots They're there they are right there Limer L-I-M-M-E-R uh, Matt you can go ahead and search those to Limer he'll make custom boots for you you're gonna have to wait probably six months or a year to get them but uh, my feet are slightly two different sizes so I went ahead and had those made this was many many years ago and on on wrist there is the the Seiko Shogun the SBDC 007 SBDC 007 which I did a review here on the channel and I wore that for a couple of years super comfortable S super comfortable every bit as comfortable as this watch here but that one's a little bit thinner a little bit thinner on wrist and even a little bit lighter than this a little bit more comfortable than this but this is very close but but the the Shogun just literally disappears on your wrist and it's very durable it it has the coating on it the Dia Shield coating which is actually even harder than the alloy that they use in this which is very hard as well this is harder than stainless steel but the SBDC 007 is, is harder still so it's pretty freaking amazing as far as durability and comfort and all of that and you can buy them fairly fairly reasonably so we're talking about watches that you can buy folks that's what we're talking about is watches you can actually buy let me see what else I can find here and I've showed this picture to you guys before this is me with uh, Admiral Day and his wife let me full screen that and um, there's the Rolex day date now that one I, yeah I think that's the 1803 I'm pretty sure that's still the 1803 or it might not might been a newer one but I think that has the conventional clasp on it and I think that's the 1803 1966 model and this picture was taken in about 1985 86 ish right in that time frame and that's the uh, I date that because that's the Cadillac limousine in the background the 1977 Cadillac uh, seven passenger sedan actually it did not have the division glass it was a seven passenger sedan and we used that to pull the boat so when we we're going going to take the boat out we could carry a bunch of people and have a good time and and take that take that to pull the jet boat let's see here let's see what we can find uh, oh here's another we'll just throw in one more day date shot just because we can this one's not very clear though not it's a little bit a little bit fuzzy but there's the day date in the foreground there bottom right hand corner and those ray bands I had the uh, the sweat band on them you see the sweat band those are more like a shooter style with the sweat band at the top so those are the G15 lens those were not amber Maddox. those others were amber Maddox. this is the G15 lens and those 
ray bands. So that's the deal there. Um, now here's the 18238 in action. I think you guys have seen this shot. So these are these are heavy duty sport watches, folks. These are not to be babied around. The Rolex Date 8 is a heavy duty piece and can be your only watch, assuming your eyes are good enough to read it and all. I got rid of mine just because it was getting hard for me to read and I'm in denial. I don't like to wear my reading glasses all the time. And so that's why I really like this watch. I can read it under any circumstances, period. I mean, you know, but the day date for younger folks, absolutely positively you can wear that all the time, no issues. People say, well, it's like having butter on your wrist and, you know, it'll it'll get all dinged up and it'll look terrible. No, no, sorry, guys, that's wrong. You're, you're, these are people that have never owned them, never worn them. Not, you know, I, I wore these things for decades, folks, decades. They hold up just great. They hold up just fine. The day date is no problem. Okay, so now let's see here what else we can scare up before we're done here. Uh, no, we can't do that one. Uh, let's see here. They're trying to find one that shows the watch. Okay, this is... Um, This is the, um, I think this is the GMT. Yeah, this is the GMT with the Oyster bracelet. In that picture. Not real clear, unfortunately. So I didn't take it, so that's, that's my excuse there. And those, those are the Wayfarers. And we wore the Wayfarers on the boats because they don't blow off your head as easy. I, I lost a couple pairs of regular Ray-Bans because you'd look back at the water skier, the water skier fell down, you'd look back, and then the wind would just take them right off your your face, and they'd, they'd bounce off the boat and go right in the right in the river, right, <laughs> or bay, wherever you may be. And so I learned, after, learn, after losing two pairs of Ray-Bans, I learned to wear the Wayfarers on the boat because they don't blow off. And of course, you can put a lanyard around behind you and all that, and you know we did that sometimes too. But the the wayfarers stay on nicely, so that's the deal with that. <laughs> See, we're giving you all some practical information here when it comes to actually using the gear. Oh, here's another one. Here's here's that same watch, and this time with Tina. Um, so there's the same watch. That picture's a little bit better, but still not, still not great. And um, yeah, we just wear the watches. Now that picture's probably from very early '80s, maybe 1980, 81-ish. <clears throat> so that takes takes it back a few years, folks. People said, well, yeah, he never really wore Rolexes, but he just says he wore Rolexes. Okay. All right, now here's an Omega. Here's an Omega. See, I wore Omegas sometimes. That That's a Speedmaster, Speedmaster 120, and very comfortable watch, very thin on wrist. Now, that was a quartz. And because I didn't wear it that often, it was good because you just pick it up and put it on and it would just be working. So I wore that in rotation with the Date 8 for a while. I actually sold my Date Just because it kept, I kept, one of them would stop. Either the Date 8 would stop on me or the Date Just would stop on me because I had them in rotation for a while. And I finally got tired of the one watch stopping. So I said, okay, I'll buy the, the Quartz Omega and just rotate that with the Date 8. And that way, I only had to worry about getting the day date enough wrist time to keep running. So that kind of solved that problem. See, practical, real-world stuff is what we talk about here on this channel. Okay? Practical, real-world stuff. See if there's any other exhibits. Oh, here's the Seamaster. Let me give you a close-up of the Seamaster. 
there's a whole video on the channel here of it if you're if you're interested but it was a nice watch very nice watch it um you talk about scratches though that whole bracelet really took a beating of course i i used it as a heavy use watch and i did not like the skeletonized hands on that watch that's why i finally ended up selling that watch i did not like the skeletonized hands if that had solid hands i would probably still own it and what was neat is that had the function where you could move the hour hand around like a gmt typically has where you could unscrew it and and move the hour hand back and forth that's kind of was a cool a cool function on that watch let's see here and while we're going down memory lane let's share the picture of Paul Newman Paul Newman with his Daytona you guys want to see that one you want to see that picture this was out at Summit Point Summit Point Raceway and there's Paul wearing his Daytona so there's that um, let's see here what else uh, we're going through these things here real quick here uh, there's a buddy of mine Richard with his GMT and this one this one was an all black black bezel GMT with the Jubilee bracelet and uh, this photo was from the early 80, early 1980s, 19 maybe 82 or something. We could probably date it by that magazine if we could figure out when that magazine came out. So there you go. Um, let's see what else here. I think we're almost done with this. Oh, and also, by the way, I've got a video on my channel here interviewing Paul Fapel, who bought this puppy from me, the Red Sub. He actually bought three different watches from me over the years, one of which is this Red Sub, which I, I wore this for about a year or so, and then I sold it to him. Now, look how nice those lugs are on that watch. Look how much nicer those are than a super case. I don't care what anybody says. That's a better looking watch than a supercase. Better looking watch than a supercase. By the way, he had this watch at Steve's event at Little Treasury. He wore it there, and uh, it was like a homecoming. I hadn't seen the watch for decades, and um, he wandered in with it, and I said, whoa, cool, you've got the red sub, and so I interviewed him about it. And he, he bought three watches from me, and he still has all three. Paul Fopel, good guy, good old friend, old friend. Don't see him that often, but uh, from back in the old days. And here's the beautiful Terra. We'll, we'll wrap up with the beautiful Terra with a lady date. The beautiful Terra with a lady date. A gift from yours truly. And she wore it well. She wore that lady date very well, I should, I shall say. So there's that. All these pictures, I think all of them are on my Flickr, on my Flickr photo stream. All right, so, um, so there's, there's evidence that these watches are to be worn and used, and so you can buy a day date. We've already talked about that. You can also buy Datejusts. It's a fantastic watch. A Datejust has always been a fantastic watch. An Oyster Perpetual, just a straight-up Oyster Perpetual, no date on it. Fantastic option. Somebody asked about a, um, geez, I'd like to have a Explorer with a white dial. Well, get an Oyster Perpetual. You can get all kinds of cool dials on them. I mean, there you go. That, that solves the problem. Uh, and somebody says, love that GS, um, and Tricker's Boots, um, I love the older Ray-Bans with the Bosch and Lom lenses, there you go. Yeah, I've got about five or six pairs of those things laying around here, and I, I don't wear them that often anymore, because now I have prescription sunglasses for driving, 
Um, but I do wear them sometimes. So let's see, you can buy Oyster Perpetuals all day long. You can buy an Explorer, I believe. They're around. Um, <coughs> excuse me, certainly used, you can buy them. The Yacht Master, I think, is a fantastic, we've talked about this on the channel before, the Yacht Master is a fantastic substitute for a sub. I think it's a cooler watch. I love the, the platinum bezel on those. So the Yacht Master is buyable. It's available, used, and I think you can wander in and get them new, new from time to time. Uh, so there's that if you want to have a rotating bezel type of situation. Um, what else would be a good idea? And by the way, it has a better looking case. It doesn't have the super case on it, so it's better looking than the sub. It's a little more money than the sub, but since the sub is hard to get, it might be the way to go. Um, let me know in the chat if there's anything else you'd like to comment on or talk about, and otherwise we're going to wrap this puppy up. Going to keep this one short and sweet. Let's see here. Um... Mill gals everywhere in Europe at the friendly Datejust dealer near you. The only thing about the mill gals is they're a little bit thick. I'd rather just buy a, an Oyster Perpetual, to tell you the truth. You, you, because of that Faraday cage in there and everything, it, it, they, the whole watch is thicker. And so I would go a different direction. I would just buy like an Oyster Perpetual. Unless you really need that anti-magnetic capability but I, I think I don't think most people really need that so now if the thickness doesn't bother you and you like the look of the dial uh, the Milgauss is, is a cool watch I mean I, I'm not uh, I, yeah I'm not trying to be a downer on it I just for me I wouldn't want the extra thickness uh, for what you're getting I'd want to just go with a date chest, maybe, or a uh, Oyster Perpetual, or just an Explorer, a straight-up Explorer, and it gets thinner than the Mill Gals. So maybe somebody can chime in in the chat and and give us the uh, the exact numbers on that. But I believe that's the case. Uh, let's see here. Um, Don't think any other comments are coming in. We'll give them. We'll give them a minute to come in with any more comments, and then we're gonna wrap this puppy up. Let's look. One, let's look at the eighteen two three eight one time though. The beautiful eighteen two three eight. There's a watch you can wear every day. That's a watch that can go through a lot of heavy use, a lot of hard use. I like the Yolex Yacht Master, but I'm very happy with my GS GMT and GS Spring Drive. I guess so. <laughs> Those are a couple of fantastic options. Absolutely. Um, I mean, my goodness, you can buy both of these watches uh, to really for less than what you would pay for a sub. You could buy both. You could buy both that watch there and this watch, the Titanium Diver. You'd have to get a discount on the Titanium Diver, right? But you can do that. And you could buy this and that and have them both and have two fantastic freaking heavy-use watches and not have to wait. Not have to wait, folks. It's a pretty good-looking watch. Oh, well, you know, I don't like the clasp. The clasp is fantastic. When I first saw this watch, I, too, was like, oh, I'm not so enamored with the clasp. But as I use it more and wear it and actually use the functionality of the clasp, I'm like, oh, my God, this is fantastic. It's like, especially in the hot weather, it's just so easy to extend it if I need to and then push it back in. It just, the functionality is insane. And the comfort on wrist is insane. So it's like, 
okay I'll go with that so there's that um, I like I master 2 I think it's a great everyday and dress watch yeah and I think it's 11.7 mils thick so see that's the thing this is too thick to to force into a dress situation right but the odd master absolutely you could do it that can be an all-arounder that can be an absolute all-arounder whereas this no not really I mean not if you want it to go under shirt cuffs nicely and and you know not be like I hate I hate seeing like a huge watch kind of trying to be stuffed underneath a shirt cuff where it absolutely it really does not fit but people are trying to force the issue I think that's a non-starter um, so the craftsmanship of the GS is stunning yeah I mean they are I mean and when you see them in person it's like wow I mean especially if you've been looking at Rolexes for years and then all of a sudden you look at one of these you're like Oh my goodness. <laughs> this is this is a bit of a step up. Again, I mean not I'm not trying to take something away from Rolexes. They're fantastic, especially that 18238. I mean, you know, they step it up a notch on their all gold watches, let's face it. They step the quality up, right? But uh still the um there's something about the Grand Seikos that they just take everything to a whole new level. And that's the deal with all that. So let's see. Gotta love the earlier model day chest. Even the engine turn bezel has a cool. Oh, that was my first watch, RJ Lane. Uh, 1978. The first, not my first watch, but my first Rolex was a date chest with an engine turn bezel with a Jubilee bracelet. And guess what? The Jubilee bracelet was made in the USA. And that was the first uh, Rolex that I bought. And I loved it. It was a great watch. So, all right, I'll give you all a moment to ask any questions, put any comments in there, and then we're going to wrap this puppy up. Once again, I think we solved all the world's problems. The sweep of the spring drive is amazing. Yeah, oh, yeah, oh, yeah. It can, you can, you got to be careful if you're driving the car or something like that. You know, you can catch yourself looking at that, <laughs> looking at that second hand, and, uh, you know, take your your eyes off the road for a moment straighten up my bezel but yeah it's it's pretty freaking amazing to watch all right so we're going to wrap this but let me check real quick and see what bitcoin's doing it was pumping earlier let's see if it's dumping a little bit now yeah it's down to 11 oh wait it's 11.5 is that right let me reload here Reload and see what it's doing here. Now oh, we got a green candle. It's eleven five fifteen. So eleven thousand five hundred. I mean, this is absolutely amazing. I mean, Adam Meister and I were talking about Bitcoin a couple of years ago here on the show, here on the channel. I interviewed Adam, old friend of mine, Bitcoin guy, and. Um, we were talking about would Bitcoin hit five thousand dollars by twenty twenty? <laughs> that was what we were talking about. I think it was about twelve hundred dollars then when we were doing that interview that we were talking about it. And uh we were both speculating as to whether or not it would hit five thousand dollars in twenty twenty. Twenty twenty is the next halving, you know, when the production cut is cut in half, the production of new Bitcoin. And and so we were speculating as to whether or not Bitcoin would hit 5,000 by 2020. Here we are, you know, still in 2019, and it's at 11,500. I mean, this is insane. And somebody asked me on one of the forums, somebody asked, uh, will they be able to get a chance to buy Bitcoin again below $4,000? And I said... I wouldn't count on it. <laughs> It'd be nice if it would dip down that far. I'd grab some more myself. But I told him, I said, I said, I wouldn't count on it. I said, you know, if you don't own at least one whole Bitcoin at this point, you might not, it might not be easy to get one. You might not be able to get your hands on one. 
because they're going to get harder and harder to get, harder and harder to get a whole Bitcoin, to be a Bitcoiner. To be a Bitcoiner, in my book, you've got to own at least one whole Bitcoin. And your target should be 21, should be your minimum. You should want 21 Bitcoin. And the reason I come up with that number is 21, that they're going to make 21 million of them, right? So I figured it'd be a good idea to have 21 of them set aside for you. That's the number that I came up with. I, I actually didn't come up with it. I think Adam came up with it. I think I asked him, I think I asked him in that interview that a couple years ago, what, 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 would be the, what would be the number of Bitcoin that he recommended that people have? And I think he said 21 is a good number. Get as many as you can, obviously. But he said 21 would be a, uh, a good idea. So... Um, so there's that. Uh, I was able to buy at 7K a month or so ago. Just sold a little at 12K. Well, I hope you're keeping at least one whole Bitcoin st stashed somewhere in a no-sell zone. I've got a bunch of Bitcoin in a separate hardware wallet just totally stashed away that I'll never sell. Pretty much never. Uh, and then I've got some Bitcoin in a different account that I might sell in 2028. But I've got some Bitcoin stash that's just a, basically a permanent cold stash um, that I'm not planning on, on ever spending. So there's that. RJ Lane just spent the last two days at a five-star hotel, hotel pool Saw a lot of Apple Watches and only one Rolex. A black, black, black GMT. Not sure what that means, but... Well, first of all, Apple Watches are a great watch. I've got one sitting right over there. I've got the Series 1 with the link bracelet. The stainless steel Apple Watch with the link bracelet is a fantastic watch. And I'll tell you, if that watch stayed on all the time, I would probably be wearing it right now. I don't like having to tilt my wrist and, and to have it to come on and then it only stays on for a few seconds and it goes out. Now if you tap it with your finger it stays on longer, right? But I, I find that kind of kludgy. I don't, I don't like that aspect of it. Uh, and I never realized battery life and all this, you know, but, but that's the main reason why mine is parked. And I wore it for a while. I wore it for a couple of years on and off. Um, it, very useful, very useful tool it's really handy to take phone calls with it but um, I don't like the way it goes off too too quickly you know these watches just you can look at them anytime and you can get the time and you're good to go and they just work uh, but they're different animals they're different animals and some people really the functionality of the Apple watch really helps them a lot when they're out and about uh, so yeah, I don't fault them for wearing an Apple Watch. And I'll tell you what, the quality of the Apple Watch is stellar. I mean, they're very well made. And that link bracelet is is really nice, the way it functions and how thin it is on wrist. Here, I'll get mine. Let's see here. So it's only 10 mils thick. And let's put it on rest here. Ah, da, 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 da. Okay, and see how flat that is to the wrist? See on the other side of the wrist? I mean, fantastic and very comfortable very comfortable on wrist. There's not that much space between these links. You would think it would pinch hairs and stuff like that. And and you know how Tim always talks about ventilation and how you know you get space because of ventilates and all that. This is fine. It's very comfortable on wrist. You don't need ventilation. <laughs> There's no ventilation on this puppy, right? And I mean it works fine. So that's the thing. Here's the thing, folks. Unless people actually wear and use these things, 
they just make a lot of assumptions. If you noticed in the forums and all that, a lot of people commenting on things and all that they know nothing about. They're just assuming things, right? And you know what they say about assume. You make an ass out of you and me, right? This thing is super comfortable on wrist. It's good looking. It goes with anything. It goes with a suit. It's thin enough to go underneath the dress cuff. The only thing is, it's not on all the time. It keeps going on and off. It goes on, and it stays on for a few seconds. See that? And then it goes out. See how quick it goes out? Okay, that time it's staying on a little longer, right? See? That's it. I mean, now if you touch it with your finger, it stays on longer, right? And you can't go into the settings and say, okay, when you turn it up like that and it comes on, you can't say, okay, stay on for 30 seconds. It won't allow you to, right? So that's a fail. Um, let's see here. Craig, what do you think of the Grand Seiko Anti-Magnetic ma anti 9F SBGX293? I've never had a problem with, an anti, with a watch being magnetized in all my 40 years of wearing watches. And I've worn them around computer equipment and electronic equipment and stuff. And, and I've never had a problem with the watch being magnetized. So until that happens, I think it's a non-issue for me. I mean, other people might have, your mileage may vary, but I think for most people, a watch becoming magnetized is, is, is a red herring. I, I don't think it happens. So it's not something that I would um, need. Uh, so if I was going to buy a 9F, hey, that's what I bought right there. And and I think it can handle magnetism pretty good. I think it's pretty anti-magnetic. I think the regular 9F is pretty robust, to tell you the truth. So I don't know that you need something that's specially designed to be anti-magnetic, unless you're in a situation where that's an issue for you. Same reason you don't like the Apple Watch or the same, I don't wear my Fitbit 24-7. Yeah, I hear you. Yep. All right, well... Um, we are going to wrap this puppy up. Let's see. You can buy a lot of Apple Watches for the price of a new sub. I've never considered that Apple Watch, but maybe I should. Well, here's the thing, um, RJ Lane. It's the, it depends on the watch you get. I don't like the aluminum ones, and yeah, but the stainless steel one with the link bracelet is very, very nice. It's a very nice piece. Now, you're going to spend more money for that combo. It's going to be more than $1,000, I think. Um, but, yeah, and, and it is a pretty fantastic watch, I, I have to say. But And I don't know if the newer one, the newest one, if it stays on longer, but I don't think so. So that's the, that's the issue I have. Now, it's not, I mean, it's still very usable. When you turn your wrist up, you can read the time, blah, blah, blah. I'm reading the time, right? Still on, right? Now it just went out. So, I mean, it gives you long enough to do what you need to do. And if you tap it, then it stays on longer. Then there is a setting in the settings that it'll, it'll stay on for like 30 seconds or something. I, don't, I forget how long. But it, it will stay on longer if you tap it, right? But to me, that's just a, um, that's just something I don't like, right? And, and so for other reasons, I like to wear these other watches anyway. So, therefore, the Apple Watch is parked. But here's the thing. If I didn't own this high-end Grand Seiko, and I didn't own this, I mean, absolutely the Apple Watch would be on my wrist. I'd have no problem whatsoever with wearing the Apple Watch. I mean, I wore it for a couple of years. It's super comfortable. It's not that heavy. In this configuration we're talking about right here, it's not that heavy. It's super comfortable, and it is useful. When you get a phone call coming in, you can sit there and look and see who's calling you. You can answer it real quick and say, hey, I just got to call you back. I'm in the middle of whatever, right? Like if I'm out covering an event or something. That is kind of handy to have that capability. If you get a text message come in, you know, be able to read it on there. I mean, it's, 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 it, it is handy. Um, but for whatever reasons, I prefer wearing the, uh, the Grand Seiko Diver. So I think I'll put it back on. There's that. Both very comfortable. I would say equally comfortable. I would say this watch here is 
almost as comfortable as, as this or, or about the same. Very, very, very competitive as far as that goes. And this, it's real easy for me to take a link out and add a link in, which I do once a year. I do it in the, when the cold weather comes in the fall, and then I do it again in the spring when the hot weather starts coming in. I add a link and take a link out. But it's very easy to do with this bracelet with no tools, with just your fingernail, right? So a lot of big pluses, right? Th hey, Grand Seiko and Rolex could both learn a lot from these guys. <laughs> I'm telling you, this bracelet is really cool. The way, it, the way it closes up, and look how thin that thing is. There's no Rolex bracelet that's that thin. And I, well, you got a glide lock and all that. Well, hey, if I can very easily remove a link and add a link, that's not as big a deal anymore, right? Now, you can't adjust this on the fly on the wrist. I grant you that. But as long as you've got it adjusted pretty close, it's, it's very forgiving. And it just works. You just have to try it. You just have to wear it. And then you know. You know what it's doing. Let's see here. Um... Uh, nice of you to visit the Bark and Jack live stream. He's a good guy. He's a good guy. I don't, the only thing I don't agree with Adrian on is his position on Ro uh, Rolexes as a store value, like, you know, an investment sort of. Now, for him, it makes sense because he's building a business out of this and he needs props you know he needs watches to show and to use in his videos and all that so to have some money tied up in some watches for him it makes a lot more sense than the average person the average person I think it's a very poor use of your capital to have it tied up in multiple watches I think you should have one or two watches that you actually wear and use and take the rest of that money and invest it wisely. Now, if you're a multimillionaire like that London watch collector guy probably is, you know, if you're just wealthy, if you're a deca millionaire, then you can buy whatever Rolexes you want. You can have a dozen Rolexes, brand new. You can have a Patek Philippe. You know, you can have all of that stuff. You know, if you're if you're worth ten million dollars or more, you know, twenty million dollars, whatever. It's peanuts then, right? But to the average person who is in debt and has a mortgage on their house having money tied up in multiple sport Rolexes uh, I think is a is a really bad idea so that's the only thing I'm I don't really agree with Adrian on a lot of the other things he says makes a lot of make a lot of sense and uh, I think he's entertaining and I think if he keeps working at it uh, his editing he does a very good job on his videos I think if he keeps working at it, he can he can earn a, a decent living doing it. It's very difficult to earn a, a full-time living on YouTube. Um, a lot of my videos, I don't even bother to monetize because you get such a small amount, right? But uh, other people, this is their livelihood. I mean, uh, and, and but it's difficult. It's not... Uh, uh, an easy way to make a living by any means and it's very competitive um, so I think he'll do well I think he's uh, uh, I think he's doing well and I think if he continues to grow his base and uh, continues to do what he's doing um, he'll he'll be in in, in, in good stead um, let's see RJ Lane how many of these watch channels will go poof once the Rolex bubble pops <laughs> That's a good question, how much that will affect it, if things go back to normal, if you will. That will be interesting to see. I don't know. But, it, but I will say that, that there are a lot of, um, it's like fair weather friends, right, that are always around during the good times and then the bad times come and, and not so much, right? So, so yeah, that can very easily happen. And we saw that with the long bear market in Bitcoin. A lot of people that were in the space, actually the last two bear markets, uh, they just kind of like go dormant. <laughs> they kind of disappear. <laughs> 
And then if the market picks up again, then all of a sudden their channels come back to life and, you know, they're like all about it again and, and stuff. So, yeah, that that happens. So it'll be interesting to see what happens if the market kind of goes back to where it should be and, and we get rid of all this speculation. and stuff. But there, somebody said on one of the forums, well, you know, I went in, there's not, not, only a bunch of Datejust. It's a Datejust store. Well, buy a Datejust. They're a fantastic watch. <laughs> buy a day just and wear it they're fantastic I think they're only 11.7 mils thick somebody correct me if I'm wrong on that I I know that I think the Oyster Perpetual I think the Yacht Master is 11.7 I think the date just is 11.7 I mean that's a that's a heck of a good all around or watch um, I think the GS price is also going up soon well, they've already kind of gone up. They're already kind of going up market with a lot of their watches. Now, the uh, Grand Seiko, they're, they're a lot different uh, than Rolex in that they don't new, do much marketing, and they, they're clueless when it comes to branding and, and coming up with names for the watches and things like that. I mean, they have no clue, right? But they they put a lot of time and effort into the manufacture of the watches a lot of hand work a, a lot of highly trained professionals with many years experience putting these watches together and so more of their resources actually go into the actual watch itself as opposed to the marketing and branding and all that and they can only make so many watches because they've got a limited number of people that can do all the work on these watches and and so they're kind of at capacity pretty much right now. And I think they'll kind of stay there. They'll kind of stay where they are, where they're just kind of keeping up with demand and just kind of cruising along. I think that's where Grand Seiko will stay. And I think they'll stay a niche product for people that just want something that's really high quality that's just a super nice watch and, and don't care about the brand name if you will in other words like people that go out and buy a Toyota instead of buying a BMW because they, they want a better car right they, they don't care that they don't have the name BMW they just want a better car that they're going to get in turn the key and go and it's always going to work and they're not going to have to spend a bunch of time at the dealership and in a rent a car and so on because their BMW failed to proceed so yeah it's it's a, the whole different whole different ball game um, I'm a lot of places GS is sold out now um, yeah I mean they might start getting I I don't think you're gonna get the kind of wait waiting time that you're gonna get with Rolex I could be wrong I, I don't think it's gonna get to the point where you have to wait like years to get one you might have to wait a month or two but I think you'll be able to get the GS. You're correct. HS 11.7 mils thick. Yeah, there you go. Um, and I think that's the same for the um, Yachtmaster. I think it's the same thickness, which is very nice. Um, all right. Well, I think we're going to wrap it up. I think we've had a good, uh, good broadcast. And hopefully Steve will be doing another broadcast soon. I talked to him. I said, let's say hey, you got to do more broadcasts. Send him an email, steve at littletreasury.com, steve at littletreasury.com, and tell him, hey, we need more broadcasts. Because we do need more broadcasts from the Stevester. He's got things to show. So thanks again. I'm going to go ahead and stop this puppy. And be sure to click subscribe and click the little bell. Click subscribe and click that little bell.